Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk about uh, how I structured uh, a UI UX design project for a client uh, uh, whom I speak with, whom I spoke with today. So basically the client uh, had a app, uh, a web app uh, regarding social media. And uh, basically he already had a base going, but he wanted to bring uh, this web app to a next level. And uh, the way we um, started working together, because it's still a work in progress, and um, basically what we've done first uh, is to focus on the UX uh, of the key screen, which was the, the main dashboard screen. And uh, basically during our UI UX consultation, the very first thing uh, which uh, um, I wanted to understand uh, was, apart from the general UX audit questions such as, uh, what uh, is the, the app about? Uh, what is the target market? I wanted to learn more about the competitors and the things of that nature, which is my standard questionnaire, my standard uh, questions. Um, and also I hopped uh, with, on a call with him uh, uh, even, even before the, today's call. And uh, um, I learned quite a bit uh, during that call alone. So I already had some ground uh, uh, knowledge, but uh, the way by which uh, we brought the dashboard uh, to the next level is to is by simply understanding the goals uh, and the problems. And I know this seems obvious, but I, I wanted to show you something which uh, I think can be very, very useful. And um, I, it's a strategy which uh, I used uh, with uh, uh, small startups all the way to multi multi-million dollar companies. And uh, the process works the same and uh, it produces results uh, each and every time. And uh, basically the process looks uh, something around uh, these lines. You first ask the, pro the client, uh, what are the goals of that specific screen? And uh, if we're working on a screen, otherwise you can do the same also for a flow of screens. Um, this, this works, uh, pretty much, uh, regardless. So, uh, you ask them for the goals and, uh, you outline them in an order of hierarchy. So for example, uh, what is the very first goal that you want the user to, um, accomplish in the screen or even actions that you want the users to take and you establish that, then you go on and you ask them for the second one, then the third one and so on. And basically this uh, allows you to have uh, a bird's eye perspective on uh, what the client is exactly looking uh, to achieve, uh, to, uh, to let the, their users achieve. Uh, and um, this enables you to basically have uh, um, an overview even before you go to the wireframe, even before you note down a single sketch. And uh, once you do this, uh, um, you're ready in good, pretty good shape. Now, the second thing which uh, I always like to do is to then uh, um, note down and ask the client, what are the main problems which uh, could arise and um, the, pro the problems that the user could face? So for example, um, a problem which uh, a user could face with the dashboard is not understanding where to upgrade uh, to the premium payment plan. So you note this down uh, and again, in our order of hierarchy and the order of hierarchy is super important because this is ultimately what gives you clarity, especially if the client, like in this case, already had uh, a base going and uh, um, a good uh, understanding of what he wants. Because most of the times when you're dealing with uh, web apps uh, and dashboards, um, there's so many moving parts, there's so many moving elements, and uh, it's very difficult to create that hierarchy. And uh, a lot of the times, uh, especially startups at early stages, um, one of the patterns which uh, I saw over and over again is that they simply um, have an idea, they put it in the dashboard, and then they just continue stacking these things, uh, but without a specific order or without a specific uh, hierarchy of values. And uh, that is actually uh, something which uh, is really important and that can uh, literally like make or break the experience. So this is definitely something which uh, um, I always recommend uh, um, to do when dealing with uh, um, UX parts of the project. 
And um, of course, this can depend because uh, uh, different clients have uh, different needs, uh, different clients are in different situations. So I always want to have a call uh, before the UI UX consultation call in order to uh, really understand their needs and, the, and their desires. So uh, we could opt for a strategy. This is one of the strategies. It works a lot uh, in many cases, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it really depends on, on, on the clients. Some clients just want me to do UI design. They already have the perfect wireframe and uh, we're golden with the UX. So uh, there's not uh, much need to go into the details of this process. Although you always want to understand the context, even when you're working on uh, just a UI design project, uh, you always want to understand the, the process. Um, that being said, once you have uh, all of this, uh, you're really in good shape because uh, now you can start uh, doing the wireframes and uh, that's exactly what we did. And so once you do the wireframe um, and you have all of the goals settings, um, it's really easy to say, okay, this is the very mo the, the most important thing that you want to accomplish. So let's give it uh, quite a bit of relevance. Um, this is a secondary and this is the third area. So Let's give them a little bit less relevance. And you start, uh, you know, um, mocking up uh, a, a wireframes in, uh, uh, I'd say it's not a high fidelity wireframe by no means, uh, but uh, it really gives uh, both of you a good understanding of uh, um, UX. And uh, especially once you do all of this work, you have a checklist where with which you can check the wireframe once it's done. If it's uh, actually checking all of the all of the boxes, all of the goals, uh, is it accomplishing all of the goals? Is it accomplishing all of uh, uh, the, the problems that uh, that might raise? So you know this uh, is something which is really really valuable. This uh, and um, I wanted to share it with you because uh, uh, it's something which uh, I know for sure it can help uh, a lot of freelancers, especially. So yeah, that's that uh, and. Uh, Usually the next part of the process is uh, I would uh, go on and uh, start with the uh, UI design and uh, branding and uh, really bring up the, the visuals together and uh, uh, make it into a pixel perfect uh, uh, UI design. And um, one of the things which uh, I usually consider is uh, having, uh, uh, is using a UI kit. And by UI kit, uh, uh, don't get me wrong, each and every client project, uh, uh, visual design is going to be uh, unique. It's going to be tailored for that specific client. So it's, ne it's never a copy and paste job, but that's something which uh, um, just uh, don't do it, guys. Um, because each and every project has its own requirements and uh, you have to be uh, sensible of that. However, one of the things which uh, the UI kit can uh, be useful for is to get you going with uh, with a base uh, and also for visual inspiration, because uh, starting with a blank canvas can uh, can be quite uh, uh, overwhelming, uh, even if you've done this for for many years, like uh, like myself. And um, already starting with with a base uh, um, can really be helpful in order to speed up the process, um, get ideas going, and uh, just makes the the, the entire process more enjoyable. And uh, I'm going to leave uh, in the link below um, my favorite place from, from which you can uh, get UI kits. And um, I also have uh, many UI kits uh, on that store. So you can have a look at them. And um, yeah, I mean, UI kits can definitely be helpful, but again, guys, it's not, it's never a copy and paste job. You want to do, you want to be, um, you want to create a tailor-made suit for the client. That's exactly what you're looking for. Um, especially if you're looking to, uh, pri uh, to, to price uh, at higher levels 